You're right there, Mark here from Six Plus Save, going over a nice tutorial video for all you out there of how to paint your MDF containers up in five easy steps. Now these these five easy steps, you can use them for any containers out there, and you can actually use this technique to go to buildings and so on and so forth. Some some of you may recognise these containers from a previous video that I uploaded of the TT Combat containers. Okay, so this is the one that I actually built in the video. If I remember, I'll put it in the card up in a moment so you can actually see how these went together. But as you can see, the set of three went together right quite nice. And basically, once you're done with these five steps, you have a set of containers looking like this. Now, straight off the bat, you don't have to do blue. All right, you can do whatever colors you want. You could do blue, green, yellow, a mixture, gray, whatever you want. I just wanted to go for blue because blue containers are quite iconic. Okay, so I've got some weathering at the bottom and I'll just go over the simple, easy steps. I'm gonna get my partner to actually help with the recording of how to do these steps, all right? So let's bring over the supplies. So obviously we've got the containers. That's step one. All right. Get that back there. First step, build them. Second step, get some decent black primer. This TT Combat primer cannot fault it. As it says there, for miniatures and MDF terrain. I've had a bit of a mixed uh, history with spray cans. Sometimes they go on sweet as a nut other times they go on and gloop up this stuff here i I've, i haven't had any issues and i've seen other youtubers out there reviewing it and the tt combat stuff it's really good value for what you get so you need to get a black primer to make sure when you put it onto the mdf it has a good foundation for all the other paints to go on but also you, you don't want to really base coat it with watery paint because MDF will soak it up, it'll warp. That's why you want to use a spray primer. Second stage in a minute, a silver. I had this lurking about in the cupboard. So any silver paint will do. You can even paint it on if you want, but if you can get a spray, it will definitely help. And you're always going to use a silver when it comes to terrain and tabletop warhammer or whatever you know tabletop war game you got next paint you want to get hold of is whatever is going to be your main color for your container i went for a blue now you can probably see it is a gloss finish in the end result it won't matter okay those three spray cans then the fifth step is an actual tabletop wargaming paint okay the fourth paint typhus corrosion it's really really good for metal corrosion it's in the name it's a technical paint all right i know it's citadel and some people may go oh price this and so on and so forth you're not going to be using a whole pot in one go so this this for you know terrain painting and so on and so forth it's definitely worth the pennies you can try and use acrylic brown paint and then ultra fine sand water it down mixing pva glue but the amount of hassle you got to go through that there i've never had an issue and basically you then want some form of you know knackered up paint brush all right whatever it is for that and a sponge all right and that's all you need to turn these containers into this. All right, so I'll stop blabbing on. And now we'll go over to videos of me doing each step. So fingers crossed these go well. I'll see you at the end. Right there, so we're out in the garden. Make sure you do this somewhere well ventilated. If it was horrid weather, I'll probably do it in the garage out the way. But anyway, as you can see here, I've got this florist wire. Little trick I used I learned when I was doing all the tractor work and stuff back in the day, spraying up body works and things like that. 
you could hang your part up so then when you're spraying it, you're not getting nasty fingerprints all over it. So this florist wire, pack of 20, I think it's like a quid, two quid, you're not going to break the bank because you can reuse it over and over again. And it's really useful for actually building terrain as well. Now don't mind the dog in the background, it's probably the neighbour's dog having a nice little walk. So, just bend it round, have it so you've got a nice little hook. And this will be very useful for all the stages coming aboard or going ahead. All right, so all you do, wrap it around. If you can, get a, just get a glove because you look after your hand because this is all for a primer. It's going to stick. All right, all you do, make sure it's well shaken, fairly warm as well because the paint will go on better. And just do short little bursts. You don't need to lag the whole thing. But remember, this is a prime coat. So nice, easy. Nice, easy. Nice, easy. Okay. And then if you can, this is the fun bit. And because I got it on that wire, I can turn it without damaging it. And then you just hang that wherever you want. It's on the doorknob or anything like that. We'll stop it here and we'll come back on the next stage. Catch you in a sec. All right, so we've done the prime stage. As you can see there, I've taken it off the wire. Nice and easy. Get your silver, no matter what it is, just a silver because it's going to go underneath, as you can see. I don't need to worry about a wire because I'm not going to worry about this being black on or black or anything on the bottom because you're never going to see it, are you? So... Put it like that, however you want to do it. Glove again. Be careful with an aerosol. Obviously we're outdoors, I don't need to worry too much about a mask. Doesn't need to be 100% perfect. But get the majority of it silver. Like that. Alright. Now this stage, make sure before you go to the next stage, this is fully dry. Alright, so I'll catch you on the next stage. You're right there, we're back now for the final spray coat, which is the blue coat here. So as you can see, as I said, don't worry if it's a gloss finish or anything. The gloss will help with its durability. Okay, so anyway, the silver is fully cured. We need to make sure that's done because after we spray the top coat on, we're going to use a ripped up sponge, as you can see there, to actually rip some of that surface paint off to help with the chipping damage. All right. So as you can see here, I've gone indoors to make it a bit easier because the weather has gone a bit amiss outside. So hopefully it's not echoing too much. But anyway, got my mask on or going to have it on. So give me two secs. Let's start. And this does not need to be perfect, all right? If there's bits of silver showing through already, you're laughing, okay? Nice, easy coat. And while it's still tacky, okay, put it down. One of these turntables is really useful. Just rip the paint off, all right? on certain bits near the edges, okay? Reason why you distorted the sponge is so you don't get like perfect like edges on it. Now, I don't want to touch it too much, okay? Don't get me wrong a little bit, it's fine, but obviously you get mucky hands doing this, but hey ho, it is. All for the greater good of having a nice tabletop terrain but as you can see I ripped off quite a bit which is quite good for the weathering and if you can focus on the outsides see there that's came away a little bit that's fine let's rip off a little bit here that's fine as I said focus on the edges because that's where containers get battered but as you can see some of the silver has came away 
that's fine, but that's why you let it cure as much as possible. All right, may do one more coat. It's kind of seasoned to taste. All right, there's no like cardinal like way of actually doing this like perfectly. All right, they're all gonna look slightly different. All right, there's a bit of heavy wear on that side and a little bit there, and there you go. All right, so there's nothing all right, it looks quite like, oh my god, drastic, but in the end result, it will work. Okay, so I'll catch you back in the hobby room to do the final step. See you in a minute. You're right there, Mark, back for this final stage of this paint scheme using the Typhus Corrosion. So as you can see from the previous steps, we've got a nice bit of weathering on there. Nice, simple, it's nothing... No, it's not going to win awards or anything, but it's nice, simple. The gloss finish, you know, it may not be desirable, but it makes it a little bit more hardy. You see there underneath, no one's going to stare at it. But anyway, I digress. Typhus corrosion. Shake it up well, because it's got, it's basically got very, very fine grit in it. Extremely fine. So it, it, it replicates corrosion. All right. Sorry for wobbling the camera, I need to sort out an actual tripod for it. But anyway, you get a nice coat on your NAF old brush, all right? This stuff gets into your bristles, so don't use it on your fine brush. But I've got a, my other container here, just for reference, so I can get them to all match. But as you can see, I basically, I stipple it on, okay? And you just build it up gradually, stippling it on, Nothing too fancy because you want it to look not like you've painted it on, but it's just naturally just built up from just general wear and tear. Okay, so it's nothing too difficult. All right, this ain't this ain't some master skill. This ain't you wet blending or anything messy or mucky. But that's it. That's all you're doing. All right. See that? Nice and simple. Get it on the bottom and tap it up. See? That's it. So I'm going to do this one and then we're going to go from there and I'll see you in a minute. You're right there. Back from doing the corrosion around the bottom. As you can see, matches the other ones. They're all going to have this, you know, nice corrosion level on it. Now there is a bonus step. I've done all the containers now, but there is a bonus step that I tested out on one of the previous containers I got. So if you got this one here, you follow all the steps that are done, swap the colors out, do whatever you like, you get that. But if you do one more step, you can go from that to this. Now, it may not be 100% clear on the camera, but you can see I've got some muck and grime on there. And this is from one simple little step, okay, from using a wash. Okay, so some of you, you know, some of you may know what a wash is, some of you may not know. Basically a wash, in a nutshell, is a very thin down paint whether that's oil paint, acrylic paint, enamel paint, whatever, it's just very thin down with the medium used to make the paint. So it spreads out the pigment. So if the pigment is like 100 units per so many units of medium, this would be maybe triple to three times the medium to pigment. Okay, so basically I'm going to just show you a minute how to go from this there's more weathered one. If you want them a bit cleaner, stay with there. If you want a bit more weathered, go for this method, okay? So you can even use an Agrax Earth Shade. So a dark brown wash, because I know you've got Army Painter Strong Tone and the equivalent for, for Vallejo and so on and so forth. But if you want to keep it cheap, I've made my own homemade wash for terrain okay i'll be having a future video down the line how i actually made this but all you do obviously 
you stir it up as much as you can. Same with that one, any paints you stir it up. I've already pre-stirred this up. This would probably explode all over me. That's the fun of using one of these lids, but hey ho, it came as a yogurt. <laughs> it's a waste not want not, isn't it? All right, so it doesn't look very great, but what you want to do is get your naff brush, get some tissue, all right? Now don't be afraid slather it on all right you're not pin washing you're not being very detailed with your wash all right so you just lather it on and you may be going oh my god mark what have you done you've lost all that detail which i have not disputing i've lost all that detail this is what you do it'll be common sense when you see it scrunch up tissue rip off basically the excess so you, so you keep like a mottled effect and some of the wash will actually go into the recesses and there you go that's all you do so i'll come back in a minute and we'll just have a roundup catch you in a second all right so i'm back i've actually painted all my crates that i've got as you can see here hopefully it's picking it up on the camera there's a nice bit of weathering on there. You can see the metal. You can see the color. You can see the chip damage, the muck damage. It's just really, really simple, as you could hopefully tell with this video. So there you go. Nice, simple, stackable, easy terrain. You know, it, you can't fault it. The only expensive part in this, per se, is the Typhus Corrosion Paint and any brown wash you might use in the extra step that I put in. But I generally hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial. I do want to do more of these down the line. I really enjoyed doing this. <laughs> but anyway, if you did enjoy it, please, you know, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're seeing this content and you want to see more, please don't be afraid to subscribe for more of this content going forward and battle reports and discussions and so on and so forth. And, you know, you want to give me feedback, input, anything like that, please, by all means, you know, more, more interaction, more feedback, the better. So I'll let you all crack on. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Mark out.